بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أهل السنة is united based on kitab illa wa sunnah of rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam and ahl sunnah their minhaj or their methodology on how they practice islam how they understand islam how they deal with issues and divisions in islam that people make and, and those foreign forces which attack islam you know whether it be ideologies like secularism and 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 other things and that all of these things, Ahl Sunnah has a minhaj or a methodology for dealing with. And it's based on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Along with that, Ahl Sunnah is or it is necessary for someone from Ahl Sunnah and us as Muslims in general to always go back to Kitabillah wa sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to masik bi Kitabillah wa sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam and the prescription for all of our problems lays within that and I just wanted to without going into much explanation keeping it as brief as possible mention just the subtitles or the subheadings of a nice booklet, hopefully we'll have a chance to go through it, which is from Sheikh Suleiman Rahili, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. And it's about, or no, actually it is from uh, Sheikh Abd, uh, Abdul Razak Ibn Abdul Mahsin Al-Badr, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. May Allah preserve all of our ulama of Ahl Sunnah and bless them and preserve them and raise them up and protect them from kulli su wa makru. And in this treatise, it's called Thabat Aqidat Salaf wa Salamataha Min Taghayyarat. That it's about being firm on the madhab of the Salaf, on the minhaj of the Salaf, on the methodology of the Salaf, and the Aqidah. Being firm on the Aqidah, the belief of the Salaf and being comforted by being upon that madhab and minhaj and being cautious of changing, meaning going to other madhahib, other ways of understanding or lack of understanding. Why? Because people flip-flop and an example I'll give is there was a time when one particular individual, the people raised this individual up. This, was, this individual was a scholar, in fact. People used to blind follow and people built this individual up to as if this individual was one of the major scholars. But in fact, it came out when things came, came, uh, became apparent, this individual was not even uh, a high level on a high level of ilm or fiqh and is not known for that nor known for their studies and this individual was raised up high by the people and so many people blindly followed this individual where this individual made fatawa and this individual said this is permissible and that is permissible this person is Salafi and this person isn't Salafi this person is Sunni and this person is Sunni even the individual went as far to talk about whole continents and subcontinents and saying no no one from Ahl Sunnah is there no there's no known scholars of Ahl Sunnah there and Alhamdulillah Allah removed this individual this person of fitna from the community but what happened with the people who didn't have salama in their heart is many people broke. Some people became more extreme in their understanding of Islam. And some of the people who were very extreme and staunch before became so easy where they just threw away the principles of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. 
to now they sit with anyone, they sit with innovators, people who call to bid'ah, people who call to khilaf, people who call to that which goes against kitab wa sunnah, people who call to takfir, people who call to tafjir, you know, making uh, uh, for terrorism and extremism, ghulu, people who spend all their time speaking about others, not based on kitab ila wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is what happens if you don't have the salama that the shaykh is talking about. Some of the things the shaykh deals with in this treatise, may Allah preserve him. Some of the things he talks about is the importance or why the madhab of the salaf. Why do we follow the madhab of the salaf? That's very important. We have to question ourselves. Is it a new trend? Is this something new? Or is it based on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is it based upon the evidences that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Alaykum bi Sunnati wa Sunnat al-Khulafa al-Rashidin al-Mahdiin That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said is upon you my Sunnah and the Sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifat Is it based upon the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Khayran nas qarni thumma alladheena liyulunuhum thumma alladheena liyulunuhum thumma alladheena liyulunuhum The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the best people is my generation and those who follow them and those who follow them and those who follow them that's the Salaf that's the Madhab of the Salaf their understanding in Aqidah their understanding in, in Minhaj of Dawah their understanding in manners and Fiqh fi Deen the second thing the Shaykh uh, mentions as a main point in his treaties the reason for firmness upon the Aqidah And he says the first thing is The first thing Is adhering to the Quran and the Sunnah So how can you have that salama in your heart You know that, that comfort in your heart about being about following the, the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is first you have to really strive your best to adhere to the Quran which means you have to know the Quran you need ilm fi'lam annuhu la ilaha illallah wa sallam fi dhimbik you need ilm Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says then know la ilaha illallah that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah was sallam fi and seek forgiveness for your sins that shows us that the first thing we have to do we have to have ilm we have to have ilm, we have to know who Allah is and how to worship Him properly. So that means we have to ittisam bi kitab illa wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to adhere to the Quran, adhere to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that can only happen by knowing and understanding it with ilm. The second thing the Shaykh mentioned, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said that ittiqad. أن الكتاب والسنة مشتملان. It is believing. So the second thing is aqida that the Quran and the Sunnah is complete, and that they include everything. That you can't have doubt about those things. That's the book of Allah, the speech of Allah. That's the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam How can you be firm on the sunnah and you don't believe in the sunnah? You don't know the sunnah How can you be firm on the Qur'an? If you don't know what the Qur'an is, you don't know it's the speech of Allah You don't know any of the verses, you don't know the meanings of the verses So we have to have knowledge, brothers and sisters We have to strive to remove the jahil from ourselves May Allah forgive us of our shortcomings and bless us with ikhlas with tabad ala sunnah the, the next thing the Shaykh mentioned is returning to the Quran and the Sunnah when there's uh, differences. So whenever there's a difference, whenever you see something in the masjid, outside the masjid, on the internet, wherever you see it, compare it to what's in the Quran and what's in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if you have the ability to do so and what the understanding of the Sahaba was and that's incredibly important because some people said no I didn't read it in the Quran brother I didn't read that I haven't seen a hadith like that and they don't even know the language that the Quran and the Sunnah was revealed in and then they say they haven't seen anything what have they not seen what have they seen is the point point? and so that comes to knowledge again May Allah increase our knowledge, I mean. So we have to, when we have differences, we have to return it back to the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ulama and the scholars.
to get the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And not just anybody who's called a Shaykh, anyone who's called a scholar, but those who adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah in their practice and in their understanding, in their fiqh, in their mannerisms, and to the minhaj or methodology of the Salaf. So yes, you can only, you should be taken from Salafi scholars. Those people who adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not those people who encourage people to look at only one aspect of the deen. Those people who call to takfir. Those people who call to extreme asceticism that was not known to the people before. That was not known to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nor the Sahaba nor the Tabi'een or wala itba'a Tabi'een. No, we don't want to follow those people, no matter how good they make you feel, no matter how many ayats they misquote and misuse, their istidlal is batil. We don't need that. We need those people who help us adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, salatu wasalam. The next thing the Shaykh mentioned. was that a person should also, in order to have ifbat in the deen, to be firm in the religion, is after returning to the Quran and the Sunnah and having a comforted heart related to how to deal with the, or, or, or how to deal with uh, differences, is that they should be accepting, accepting and peaceful in their acceptance. They, they should make taslim fi qalb. They should be comforted by the evidence in the Quran and the Sunnah. That they don't need to look elsewhere. Well, maybe it means, well, maybe my shaykh said, well, maybe so-and-so said, even though Allah said, even though Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even though salaf of this ummah, Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, or Abu Bakr, or Umar or Uthman or Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, or any of the sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, that they said it, and they were united upon it. But yet you want to follow something other than that. وَعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ May Allah protect us and preserve us. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. The next, so the Shaykh said that we should be comforted in our heart by what, how the Quran and the Sunnah deals with these things. Then the Shaykh mentioned that a person needs a sound intellect. That their intellect as well as their heart needs to be sound and pure. A clouded intellect, clouded with all kind of foreign ideologies. You can see how that messes people up. I know how many people do I know who are so-called intellectuals from Muslims and non-Muslims. But they don't know anything about Islam. Nor do they know how to deal with the text of Islam. Even if they've memorized the Quran, they don't really know anything. Why? Because it's all their philosophy. It's all how they feel. It's all how they think. It's their rai, it's their opinion, it's their view and the view of the people who follow their madhab but not the view of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Salaf of this Ummah and those who follow them in Ihsan No The next thing the Shaykh mentioned in order to have firmness in the religion he said it is also it is, is to love Oh, oh yeah, it's actually to, it's an obligation to be comforted or to accept this Aqidah, the uh, Aqidah that's espoused by Ahlul Sunnati with Jama'ah. That's an obligation. It's not a choice that we, you know, you can choose not to follow Ahlul Sunnah. Well, you know, I, I like Ahlul Sunnah, they're okay, but I kind of like extreme Sufis who go to the graves too because they're really nice people and their manners are so great. You know, the Shia are really nice to me in such and such place, and I know that they curse the Sahaba and make takfir to the Sahaba, but, you know, they, they make me feel good, and, and it doesn't really hurt putting that little stone that we pray on. No, that's not what Islam is. Islam doesn't give you a choice in the matter. It's not democratic in how you, in the Aqidah you choose. Wa iyadu billah min dhalika. Well, rather it's ittisam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Wa tasimu bi habli lahi jami'an wa la tafarraku. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and hold on, all of you, steadfast to the rope of Allah, and do not divide. 
That's what we're ordered with. We're not ordered to have a new choice and a new madhab and a new minhaj, but rather it has to go back to Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh mentioned, and we've kind of generally mentioned it, that going back to the understanding of the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een that's incredibly important if you want thabat Allah upon the Quran and the Sunnah then you have to go with the understanding of the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that's going to make you firm and when differences come and, and confusion comes you'll be able to ride the storm and you won't change this to the left this time and to the right this time and you know have a new position unless it's a new position based on humility and based on the haq there's nothing wrong we accept the truth if we're mistaken we have to accept that but what i'm talking about is rejecting the haq because there's a new trend or it's not fashionable to to be on the haq nowadays or there there's some uh new methodology and ideology that people are espousing or new fiqh a new understanding of the religion no there's no new understanding. It's based on Kitab wa Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And may Allah bless us with a class with that. Allah Dalik. Ameen. The next thing is Tawasid wa Ittidaw. This is very important as well. The Shaykh mentioned that also in order to be firm and adhere to the Sunnah and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we need to be uh, balanced. And we need to we need to be balanced and just. So that means even when we deal with Ahl Bid'ah, those people who differ with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as long as they haven't left the fold of Islam, we have to be just with them. And even and, and non-Muslims, we have to be just with them and, and balanced. We can't lie on people. You can't distort the truth about them and their religion. You have to tell the truth about their religion. Based on evidence, that's what it's about. Refutation, refuting, refuting is from Islam. Refuting falsehood is from Islam. That's the usul of Islam. Refuting Ahl Bid'ah is the rasul of Islam. But it's based on justice. And that's unfortunately what we see little of today. We see little balance and little justice when dealing with someone who differs with us. And even refuting a mukhalif. Maybe this person is not from Ahl Bid'ah. But we're not just with them. We want them to be from Ahl al so we try to make them from Ahl al for one small issue, one small Messiah we differ with, one small issue that we're possibly wrong in. But yet you made bid'ah of them and you ruined their reputation. This is not justice. You have to go back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Faham of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and the, and, the, and the Salaf of this Ummah, those who came after them and the Ru'at. Were they just? Did they fear Allah when they criticized? Or did they do it on their desires? And we already know the answer. They did it with fear, with taqwa, with having taqwa, because that's what Allah calls for. They feared Allah when they criticized Ahl Bid'ah and people. They were just. Because they knew that if you take the haq of anyone, even a mubtadir, even a kafir, even uh, whatever, whoever, you're going to be responsible before Allah. May Allah protect us and forgive us for our many, many sins. Ameen. The next thing the Shaykh mentioned, and I think this is one of the last things, <clears throat> he said, is that we should make preference to the text, to the Quran and the Sunnah, over our intellect when it comes to the religious affairs. That you can't say, well, the Quran says this, it made riba prohibited. The Sunnah made riba prohibited and Allah makes war on the person who takes riba. But you know, I live in America and I live in Germany and I live in Britain. And I think in my view, in my opinion, in my estimation that riba or, or, or that we can take, you know, just one house because it's not fair that we're renting. A Muslim should be able to own a house. Yes, a Muslim can own a house if it's halal. If it's based on those Sharia principles, not bending the principles to fit our intellect, and that's what we mean. So you have to take, make precedence, take precedence, give the Quran and the Sunnah precedence over our intellect when it comes to religious affairs. Or saying, no, the Sharia is not fit now in this time. The, the, the punishments are not fit. We think we are uh, people who are for the 
uh, belittlement of the Sharia. I mean, they have groups who consider themselves Muslims, who are just secularist dogs, who say that the Sharia is not useful in this time, that we need a new system. We need to adopt somebody else's system. No, that's a law system. If it wasn't that it was a law system, you will find many contradictions. And if it wasn't that it was a law subhanahu wa ta'ala system, then, then we would be open to following this system and that system and put our own patchwork together. Because man makes mistakes. Man does things based on his, his and her, uh, you know, on, on their desires. But without perfection. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. And He is over all things omnipotent. And He is the Hakim. He is the ruler. The sovereign ruler. And this is His mulk. You know, He owns this dominion. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So He has the right to judge it. In accordance with His law. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the Shaykh mentioned that a person should have a beautiful, keep a strong relationship with Allah, and this is so important because it's easy for me to make this video and talk and speak, and, and it feels good and it sounds good, and this and that and the other. But how's your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, I question myself all the time because I know my relationship is weak. Am I making the tahajid, the late night prayer, the witr? Is that a part of my life? Am I doing, how, how's my prayer? Is it really, you know, question yourself. Don't ever think, well, you know, hey, I pray five times a day, that's enough. No. And you need to work on your prayer. Maybe there's, there's deficiency in your prayer, so pray extra. How's your fasting? Are you fasting anything extra? Some of us don't even fast Ramadan. So that shows us we got to get good relationships with Allah. That's incredibly important. That's the madhab of the Salaf. Also, having certainty in the completeness and perfection in the, in the, in the belief, in this itaqad, in this aqidah, aqidah ta'ahl sunnah. It's perfect because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has to do with the belief of, uh, in Allah and His angels and His books that He sent and the messengers alayhim after salatu salam and the day of judgment, that there is a day of resurrection, we're going to be called to account and the, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Also, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name, divine names and attributes in, without changing their meaning and distorting their meaning and rejecting and negating their meaning as we spoke extensively about in Aqidah to Wasatiya. And finally, the last principles I'll, I'll just sum up briefly that we have to reject the madhahib of Ahla Bida of those people who innovate in the religion and adhere to the Sunnah and be united as Muslims but united on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And that we should clarify and understand the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah and clarify it to others. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.